Well, what's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to be talking about backups for our Proxmon environment. So this was a question that was brought up in my Discord server. So we were chatting in the Discord server about backups and somebody brought up the question about you know modern backups, make sure they work and how we do it, how I have it set up. They mentioned the Seagate 321 backup method or the standard 321 backup method. So we were talking about all that, how to back up your Proxmox environment, how to make sure everything's safe, and how to have the best options. So we're going to get right into it and get started. So if you remember a few videos ago, we actually made the Pinez. Here it is right over here. It was a 3D printed case, a little SSD, and snuck in there is a Raspberry Pi. It's a simple little budget NAS. I made this for like less than $50 probably. And that's what we're going to actually use to be backing up our backups today. So I do have a 500 gig hard drive in there. And you can use whatever you want, terabyte, two terabytes, whatever you might have. Or you want to use an HDD, a, you know, whatever you have you could use. And that's what we're going to be using to back up or whatever machine you have. It doesn't need to be a Raspberry Pi. It could be a mini PC that you have with a Samba share or a NAS or... You know whatever else you might be using or an external hard drive but we're going to talk about all that and uh, to start let's go over the 321 backup method so if you're not familiar with the 321 backup method it pretty much is the idea of three copies of your data so you have three separate copies of what you're trying to back up over two different versions of media so you know like uh, you have two different copies over you know two different hard drives stuff like that and you have one copy off-site in your home lab, you're probably not going to have an off-site backup because you probably don't have a large enough off-site environment to store your virtual machines and stuff like that. You might have your documents saved off-site off -site in a Google Drive or something, which is actually what I do. But you might have it spread across, you know, like multiple copies of backups over two different machines, which we're going to talk about today. But this is the 3 to one method, and I'll put a link down to this in the description so you can read along if you want. Since we're on Seagate's page, we're just going to go over some of their hard drive options that you could use for this. So you do have like this Ultra Touch HD. Um, it's five terabytes, so it's going to have some good storage. But something like this, like this One Touch family, can go up to twenty terabytes. This is like a USB, where you get like an HDD, which is a lot cheaper, or you get a USB, um, and you can pretty much size up to what you need. Those are pretty good options. Oh, I want to see some. Uh, that's what it is. So if you get the hub option, that's how you get the larger quantity so this is like equivalent to buying a really expensive NAS um, but it comes with your disc already so if you don't want to spend a thousand dollars on a NAS because the hardware and the discs this could be a good option I'm guessing this is like a USB connection it looks like and it's pretty much just like running an external looks like almost like running the DAS so good option to do backups through here but if you don't want to do something like that for that price tag, you can get one of these regular budget, uh, well, not, I won't say budget, but less expensive uh, storage drives. So you get like a two terabyte Barracuda SSD, it's a good option. Stuff like that, you can take a look and of course you can use Western Digital or any of the other providers you might like. And you can plug this into like a, a Raspberry Pi or a mini PC or whatever you want to do and make a share up of that. So you have another way to back up your uh, backups off your Proxmox host. I know backup a backup a backup, but it's just um, it's another method to do it. And I'm going to show you how we could have this all set up in Proxmox. So now that we kind of talked about the backup method and how you could do it, let's actually get into what we're going to be doing with our backups and how to set them up. So this is actually my local server that I use. This is my main Proxmox host. So you can see I have a bunch of different virtual machines on here. I have a Docker environment. I have a couple Windows VMs, I have my open game panel, and this is a Linux VM I use for school. Uh, of course, I don't want to lose any of these, so it is important for me to keep my backups. So in the, the data center option, you can come over and there's a backup tab. So just quickly over here, you can see I have, uh, it runs monthly, when it runs, where it saves, and how many I want to save, and the VMs I want to save. I'm going to show you how to set this all up and how I did it, and uh, we're going to do that now in the Barmine Tech server. So you can see right now we're over on the Barmine Tech server. I have a couple of VMs that we've actually worked with on the channel in some of the videos. There's the Ubuntu desktop machine, some of the Docker environment we normally use, and the Casa machines. So the first thing we gotta do is connect the PyNAS that we made in that one video I was talking about earlier to Proxmox so we can actually save to it. So under the data center, you're gonna click storage. And then over here, it's gonna show our disks. And here we can connect the network share to Proxmox. So we're gonna click add SMB CIFS. And then over here, we can name it. I'm gonna call it backup. The server is gonna be the IP address of it. So for me, it's 112. And 
then you would put in your credentials if it's the share is protected by a password. And over here, you can click share, and there'll be a drop down, and you would select the share. If you do have uh, credentials onto the share, you need to type them in, and then it will show the share. If it type them in the right, it'll show, it doesn't show the share, just close it out and try again. Sometimes it's a little buggy. Um, if you type it wrong, it's not going to show the share. So just try until you get it right, and then you can go from there. The next thing we want to do is come over to content, and we want to select what we want to be able to save on the disk. So it does give you different options. You can save disk images, which would be like making VMs. ISO images, which is what I do want, so I'm not going to do disk image, I don't want that. And then we're going to do the VZ dump backup files and snippets. And then you could also do container Im images, but we're not going to be making VMs or containers all for this. It's just for backup storage. And then we'll click add. So now over here you can see I have my backup storage disk, and we can actually use this for our backups. So now we can actually set up our backup task, and if I come over here in the backup tab, we can actually set it up. So we click add, and here is how we can make our backups. So we would select our storage where we want to save it to. I'm going to use the backup drive because that's what has the storage for it. And then we can do the schedule. So this is where it kind of gets into how you want to do it. I like to run mine monthly because that's how I acquaint for my storage that I have. Of course, if you have more storage or you want to run them more often, if you do more changes, you can adjust it to that. Typically, I don't make a lot of VM changes, so it doesn't matter to me. A monthly basis works, but if you're adding VMs or you're doing a lot of different edits on your machines often, you probably want to adjust it so it's going to be weekly or daily if that. Uh, I'm going to do every day at 2100, and then in here you could just have it so you could select which VMs, or you could just do all the VMs or exclude certain ones. I'm just going to do the include selected ones, it's the easiest one. And I could just select the ones I want. So let's say I want these three. You can have it try to send an email. I never get this to work right, but you can give it a try. And then for compression option, I just usually leave it at ZSTD. It's fast and good and works the best. And then I leave the mode at snapshot. And then you could either enable the backup task to run or not. The next thing you want to do is retention. And you can here select how many backups you want to save. If you want to keep all your backups, or if you want to say like keep two of them keep two dailies, keep weeklies, however you want to do it, you can set up in here. Um, the good practice is to probably have, you know, like a weekly, a monthly, a daily, stuff like that, however you might want to break it up. Of course, you could figure this how you want to do it. And then it's just a template of how it's going to name it in the actual file path, but that's whatever it is. So we're going to click create, and now the task will actually run to save your backups. One thing to keep in mind when your backups run, it is gonna be using up a lot of resources on your server. So you probably wanna to try to schedule it outside of your use hours. So it will cripple down your VMs if it is running while you're trying to use them. Another thing to keep in mind is that the backup sizes are gonna be pretty large. So if you have a large VM disk, it's gonna be a large backup. So take that into account when you're setting everything. Oh, I made a mistake once of setting to back up my Plex Media Share. And I went to back up eight terabytes of data, not realizing it didn't compress or anything like that. A little oopsie I made, but I learned from it. So make sure you keep that in mind when you set up your backups to make your backups available for what you could actually store and go from there. Um, you might want to make it this decisions on what can be saved, what doesn't need to be saved and go like that. And that's kind of how I judge my backups. What's important to me if I need to replace it VM. But now the backup task is saved and now we could set it so we can replicate it to another uh, backup area so we could do like, like two different media methods and I'll also show a offsite method if you're interested in it. I'll go over those two next so let's work on that now. So if you remember from a couple videos we actually talked about duplicity and I'm going to be using this to replicate my backups over to another disk. You can do this as well too or you can use other containers or processes you might want to use um, here's the sample share container. This is actually what I run my sample share off of for this Docker machine. I run the mini PC and so it runs Docker and it has another disk in there that runs the sample share and that's what I use as my cheater NAS. Um, but duplicity can be used to take files from one spot and move them to another. Uh, if you watch the video on it, I actually did it to back up my schoolwork and documents I need to a Google Drive. But it works locally and it can also remote to uh, work remotely. So I'll just show you how this works real quick. We can do add a backup, we'll configure a new one, and then here we'll just kind of skip through 
and then we can do the backup destination. So, so in here we can either select a backup locally, or we can SFTP it, or FTP, or any of those to another location. So let's say you buy a Google Drive, you have like a five terabyte Google Drive, and you want to back up your VMs there, you can. It is integrated with it. You would just link it up, and you can move it there. Or if you have a VPS that's meant for backups, they are out there, and you can get them pretty affordable, about $10 a month. Um, you can use SFTB to move them over there. If you do do it on a backup VPS, make sure to lock it down really tight, put fail to ban, uh, set the IP tables rules, do two factor, do all this good stuff to make sure it's protected. You don't want your VMs to fall in the hands of somebody else. You don't want any of your information getting stolen either, so make sure you protect it. But you could use duplicity and it would push it across, and then you would have another backup method. So you could use this for your offsite method and to replicate locally if you wanted to. Personally, I've been using Duplicity for about a month now. Uh, I had a little bit of a slip up where I almost lost all of my schoolwork for the whole last four years of school. And more importantly, I almost lost all my work for this semester because my computer died and I didn't replicate any of the files over to another spot. So I almost lost all my schoolwork and had a big oopsie for the whole semester. But I was able to get it back and right away I made a backup option so it replicates over. So the same idea works if you want to save your Proxmox backups and you could bump them over to a Google Drive or another machine locally using duplicity. I know I made a backup video in the past and I know this one goes into a little bit more detail showing some more options, but this is how you would set up like a network drive to be used for backups in Proxmox, scheduling the task and having that run. The one thing, a couple things to keep in mind is that just because you have a backup doesn't mean it's a good backup. You might have a backup from every month, but it might not be good and might not work if you try to restore them. So that's where it comes in to have maybe multiple backups. You might want to save the last two or three if you have the space to. So you actually have backups to use in case one's bad. You can roll back to a previous one that's hopefully good. But regardless, having those VM backups is really important. You never know when something might happen. You might be making a change on a Linux machine and corrupt the whole machine and have to start over. So at least having that backup to roll back to is really helpful, especially if that machine has important information on it that you really need. Um, I hope you guys have found this video useful. If you did, make sure to drop a like and comment below if you have any questions or if there's a topic you want to see coming up or what's your backup method that you use. Do you use the 3 2, one idea? Do you just save at least one backup? Because that's what I normally do. I usually have one backup of the VMs that I want to save and then I just take a chance. Um, the channel has been around for about a year now. We're actually going on about a couple weeks over our year. And I do appreciate everybody that stuck around and taking time to watch the channel and help it grow. Uh, it really means a lot that you guys have helped the channel grow so much and we're able to still make these videos and you guys keep coming back to watch them all. So thank you very much for all of that. I do have a Discord server. I'll have the link to that below. I have a Twitter. I don't really use it as much. I'm just not really a big Twitter guy, but you can hit me up on Twitter if that's your spot you want to talk. Discord's a really good spot because I'm on a computer all day for work. So usually when the Discord ping comes through, I'm able to go check it out and we can chat if we need to. Again, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.